Hello and welcome to the UK Wildlife Podcast with me, Neil Phillips. And me, Victoria Hillman. Uh, it's been a little while since the last episode, but we're going to crack straight on with the topic, which is golden eagles. So I, I'm going to kick us off. I think golden eagles is something we've been meaning to kind of do an episode on for a while because they are absolutely stunning birds. So the golden eagle, Aguila crassatus, is possibly the best known bird of prey in the northern hemisphere occurring throughout North America, Eurasia and Africa, with five subspecies recorded. Historically, the golden eagle was widespread throughout the whole Arctic, but has since disappeared from heavily populated areas, and still remains rare in many Eastern European countries, with some populations still in decline. The golden eagles are territorial, holding territories of up to 150 square kilometres, and although their habitat requirements are not specific, they are dependent on undisturbed nesting sites. Their habitats range from sea level up to several thousand feet, occupying open terrain, mountains and plateaus, but are rarely found in heavily forested areas. During harsh winters, they will migrate southwards if food supplies decline. So the golden eagle is a large bird. It's got a wingspan of up to seven foot, which is about two metres or so, and it weighs between 3.2 and 6.4 kilograms, with the female being one quarter to a third larger than the male. The name comes from a striking golden colour crown and a nape in adult birds, with the rest of their plumage varying from dark brown, black, to dark golden brown in colour. Immature birds have a more mottled appearance, with white bands on the tail and at the carpal joints. These white patches gradually disappear with each molt, until the adult plumage is reached at around five years. The feathers of adult birds extend the full length of the leg to the massive yellow talons, whereas those of immature birds only extend part way down the legs. Golden eagles reach sexual maturity at about five years and live for around 15 to 20 years. However, they have been recorded living as long as 32 years. Golden eagles are considered as avian apex predators, meaning that healthy adult birds are not preyed upon. The prey of golden eagles is small to medium-sized mammals and birds, depending on their habitat, with carrion being an important supplement. They will also steal or kleptoparasitize prey from other raptors. The predominant prey of nesting birds, making up between 50 to 94% of the diet, are species to the leopards, the rabbits and hares, and also ground squirrels and marmots in Europe. Other prey regularly taken include young deer, chamois, ibex and goats. However, they will kill adults if food is scarce by driving them off cliff faces. They will also prey on gallinaceous birds, ground-dwelling or game birds, such as grouse and ptarmigans. There are records of golden eagles taking other raptors, such as Eurasian eagle owls and falcons, and will displace vultures and other raptors from carrion. The eyesight of golden eagles has a resolution power around eight times greater than that of humans, and they can see in colour, allowing them to spot prey from a long distance and use their talons for killing and carrying. And a mating pair will often work together with one of the pair driving the prey towards the waiting partner. Although they are well adapted to hunting a wide variety of prey in numerous habitats, actually around 70% of hunts result in failure. It's quite common in a lot of predators, isn't it? It is, yeah. The greatest predator of all, of course, is the dragonfly, which I'll just suddenly bring up in this talk. So, golden eagles reach sexual maturity at around five years, at which point they will start to look around for a mate, with which they will pair for life. At this stage, they will set up a territory and start to build nests, or eyries, of branches and grass when in use, either in trees or more commonly on cliff faces, which they may use alternately subsequent years. The courtship display is performed in flight, which involves plunging and looping together. After mating, the females will typically lay two eggs, a few days apart, known as asynchronous laying, although free eggs are not uncommon, which are incubated for up to 45 days, primarily by the female. When the chicks hatch, they will weigh around 3 ounces, and they are covered in white fluffy down. The parents will feed the chicks for an average of 50 days. However, often it is only the older chick that will survive, as it is typically slightly bigger and stronger than the second chick, due to being a few days older. The larger chick will normally win squabbles over food, and the Cain and Abel situation of the larger chick killing the smaller chick is commonly seen. It is not clear why this happens, as it appears to be unrelated to insufficient food or innate aggressiveness, and may simply be the second egg acting as a reserve chick should anything happen to the first one. The chicks or eaglets fledge at around 72 to 84 days, and remain dependent on their parents for up to 11 weeks. A golden eagles actually have a long and sometimes colourful relationship with humans, 
and their culture, ranging from heraldry to falconry to religion. The golden eagle is currently the national bird of five countries and used in the coat of arms of a further three and is featured in the coat of arms of many other countries. The golden eagle's former range spanned the northern hemisphere throughout North America, Europe and Asia, breeding throughout the plains, forests and mountains there. As a result of persecution and poisoning, the species has experienced decline in its numbers and range, and in some cases extinction. For example, it is now extinct in Ireland, England and Wales. The biggest decline has been seen in Central Europe, where this species is now restricted to the mountainous areas, such as the Apennine, Alps and Carpathian mountain ranges. There are two main causes that have been mirrored across the globe for the decline in numbers, and these are poisoning and habitat destruction. Habitat destruction has been a major driving force behind the declines, where in the late 19th century, eagles have been driven from huge areas they used to inhabit and restricting the amount of available territories and food. The increase in human population has resulted in intense industrialization and deforestation for the growing of food crops and has resulted in a dramatic decline of suitable territories for juvenile eagles. There have also been increasing cases of electrocution of eagles by power lines in Europe. Although some countries, such as Germany, now have laws in place to ensure that all power lines are bird friendly, it is in the rural areas that overhead power lines pose the greatest threat, especially to juvenile eagles, as they look to set up their own territories. Poisoning, both indirectly and through pollution, and directly through bait and persecution, pose the greatest threat to these birds. In some areas, approximately 50% of golden eagle deaths are now attributed to humans. In the 20th century, the use of chemicals that accumulate through the food chain, such as DDT and other insecticides, were a major contributing factor in the decline in numbers of these birds, along with many other predators. And although many of these insecticides are now banned, the eagles still suffer from poisoning, but it is now the eagles themselves that are the targets. Many farmers believe eagles are responsible for the death of young livestock, such as lambs, and although it's illegal, it still occurs, including in the UK. Eagles are also poisoned or shot on grouse moors and private estates where hunting takes place as they are believed to be responsible for the decline in grouse numbers and as a result huge swathes of suitable golden eagle territory remain uninhabited by them. As well as numerous cases of dead birds of prey including eagles being found in areas dominated by grouse moors the satellite tag data shows them disappearing in suspicious circumstances where tags previously operating with no problems suddenly stop transmitting in areas managed for grouse moors something we've mentioned before on this podcast. A study by Scottish Natural Heritage found that 31% or 41 of the birds disappeared in suspicious circumstances over areas managed as grouse moors, and they concluded that a relatively large number of satellite tag golden eagles were probably killed, mostly on or near some grouse moors, where there is recent independent evidence of illegal persecution. So what now? Despite declines in numbers, ongoing persecution and habitat destruction, the golden eagle is listed as least concerned on the IUCN red list. However, this is largely due to the large Asian and American populations. A greater understanding of their needs and also the impacts of what we would term environmentally or ecologically friendly energy alternatives is required along with close monitoring of territories to provide an understanding of what human activities cause disturbance. Only then can we effectively plan and implement conservation strategies for this beautiful, majestic bird. Yep, they certainly are fabulous birds. Hopefully they'll reintroduce them to England at some point. Yeah, they, are, they are amazing, I think. You know, definitely a huge soft spot for golden eagles. Absolutely stunning. I'm, I'm actually in the middle of drawing mm. one as well. So I'm doing the, the talent. It's going to be a golden eagle drawing mm. with a difference. Even I don't know what it is. So, no, I haven't even shown Neil, actually. Yeah, it's going to be very, very different. It is taken from one of my own photos, but it's going to be very, very different. So stay tuned. But we will share it once yeah. I've got round to you, You've actually seen them close up in a hide in Spain, haven't you? I have, yes. Yeah, yeah. I've actually seen the parents plus their chick for that year, all three of them yeah, together. My views consist of two sightings in Scottish Highlands. One was a dot that was slightly bigger than the two buzzard dots it was flying near. And the other was a dot at the top of a mountain, a literally like at the top of a cliff face about like a mile away. When I worked up in Scotland, I worked up on East Airline, the Inner Hebrides. I did see them quite often, actually, either sat in the top of the trees or, or soaring. So I've, I've seen them quite nice. a lot in Scotland, actually, Popper around the island. A bit too far away and trying to photograph off still a boat. Eagles but eagle. yeah, yeah, it is. It still counts. That's it from us, isn't it? Um, hopefully we'll be a bit more regular in the future. 
there's a few episodes waiting to be finished off and, and hopefully put together and edited. We've had a few things going on personally, health-wise, and just technical difficulties as well. My laptop broke, by which I mean I was trying to plug in the wrong charger for a week or two and then realised I had the wrong one. <laughs> yep. Saying nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Technical whisked me. Happens yeah. to everyone. Yeah. But yeah, we, we will hopefully be back a bit more regularly. We've got lots of exciting episodes actually coming up as well that we're in the process and of so, writing. Yep, and sorting out a few guests as well, hopefully coming up. So yeah, hopefully the next episode won't be Birdfest, yeah. <laughs> which we're both going to be at, by the way. I'm, I've actually confirmed my stand at Birdfest as well, so I will be there with my artwork under Woolly Wildlife in the Puffin Marquee. So if you're going, please do come along and say hello. I will actually have my Golden Eagle drawing there, so if you want to come along and have a look at it in person. I'll also have a lot of other stuff there as well, and... Yeah, it's going to be an exciting mm, year, I think, at Bird Fair. Talks about doing something I probably can't talk about yet with people at Bird Fair, but we'll both be on the podcast stand as well. So as well, so yeah, we will. And a little bit more information no, nearer the time, but you will be able to come and adopt your own little mini Egyptian vulture from me at Bird Fair. They're little five centimeter high wall sculptures of Egyptian vultures and percentage of the sales will actually be donated to the Creating Brighter Futures organisation, which is the, the organisation that Birdfair and BirdLife International are supporting this year. But I will provide many more details about that. I think that's pretty much it. The only other news I can think of, as always, go check out the YouTube channel. It's doing quite interesting videos, I like to think. I saw some hawfinches as well. They're pretty cool. There's a video on hawfinches coming. By the time this goes out, there'll probably be a video on hawfinches on there. So go check it out. We'll wrap it up there. Good to just get a podcast under out there again. And we'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Yep. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you for listening to the UK Wildlife Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do subscribe and leave a review for us on Apple Podcasts or whichever podcast service you use. You can follow us on Twitter at UK Wildlife Pod, or one word. Or on Instagram at UK Wildlife Podcast. And like us on our Facebook page, UK Wildlife Podcast. And you can also post to the UK Wildlife Podcast community group. If you would like to share your wildlife news or sightings with us on Instagram or Twitter, then please tag us in the post and use the hashtag UK Wildlife Podcast. And you can now support us through our Buy Me A Coffee account, which you can find at buymeacoffee.com forward slash UK Wildlife Pod, where you can give us a one-off bit of support or join our membership scheme. Head there to find out more. This episode was edited by Oscar Henderson. You can find him on Instagram at oscar.creates.